Kenya. Right. Since the formative days, if you've been watching TV with any regularity, Rafael Tuju is not a new face. He is a former journalist and, of course, uh, the people who pioneered journalism in this country and they laid the groundwork of what so many people are doing right now as far as journalism is concerned, especially the electronic media. And, of course, also from the print media, we have uh, our guests as well who will be talking to us this morning and also from the academia as well, people who are going to school to do communications and just study journalism, how has it changed so far? Because we're living in an epic of time where we have the digital disruption. But what does this pretend for the media as well? And this is what we want to drill deeper on and discuss this morning with our panelists today. Uh, you can head over to our Twitter handle, as I mentioned before, AM Live NTV is our Twitter handle, AM Live NTV is our profile name on Facebook, and 206 86 is our SMS portal. Allow me to introduce our panelists this morning who are already here. We have with us uh, Dorothy uh, Kwe. She is a consulting editor. Also, we do have with us as well Professor Levi Obonio, who is the dean of uh, dean of uh, Dayse University, that is Communication and Media uh, Studies. Also, we do have with us Peter Morutera, who is a consulting, also a communication expert, and, of course, Rafael Tuju, who is a former uh, TV journalist and, of course, also right now the CS uh, with a portfolio in the government as well. Let's just get down to business. And f first of all, maybe from the academia, uh, we can start with the Professor Levio Bonio looking at Rafael Tuju. Uh, what really comes up to mind? <laughs> and comparing maybe the journalism today and we, the anchors today, what is diametrically different? Have we dropped the ball? Have we uh, grown so far? Have we kept steady with what they said for us? Good morning. Good morning. The first thing is to invite uh, Mr. Tuji to the Academy to come and uh, impart this knowledge that he has had uh, over the years to the upcoming graduates and students that we are training. He's never and been there. He has never, I mean, after all this thing is done, we need that reservoir, we need that knowledge in the Academy so that we can impart this and uh, I think it's really exciting, the panel here, I mean, uh, Mr. Warutere, I mean, Dorothy, these are all, if you combine this knowledge here and you now put this in a class, can you imagine the kind of people you'll turn out, the history of the print economic journalism yes. and all that. But coming to the question that you're raising in terms of uh, uh, the state of the media at the moment, this region, I mean our market, the Kenyan market, yes. provides us with a very interesting case study of looking at the continental media because I think we are one of the more progressive media uh, industries in the region. If you look at both the state of the print media, the electronic media, now the activities that are going on social media, that you find a very active uh, audience. Mm. You look at the profile of the people who are currently working in the industry in Kenya. I mean, if, if you situate that globally, I mean, within the continent, you find that you got one of the best uh, uh, profiled uh, uh, cadre of professionals that in the industry. Does that mean that we don't oftentimes come short of what is the, the, expectations, the expectations are? No, but I think we do a very good job at doing that and the, when you look at the health of the media in Kenya, I think it's also fairly helpful in giving us a picture of what is likely to be across the, uh, uh, across the globe. Uh, sometimes it's not very easy to speak of uh, the health given the fact that we notice this, uh, the, the dropping circulation. But I think it's worth noting that as much as you probably notice the circulation of the print media and probably the viewership of the uh, national media uh, not at the directions expected to be, but there's a huge growth in uh, vernacular media across the country mm -hmm. that we're currently seeing. The yes. number of people that are taking to listening to uh, radio in vernacular, to watching TV on vernacular. The problem that I see with it is how it has also divided the country because you find people who are watching, are listening to media in these vernacular uh, languages are close to what's happening in the rest of the country. So that if you start from Busia, for example, the people, the increasing numbers of people who are tuning to the stations in that language, in that region, that's all they listen to and probably listen to nothing else. As a result, the, because the local media is focusing on local content, they may not actually be alive to what's going on just across the county on the, the other side because the language being used, the stations that are being listened to is different. So this surge of niche media uh, that is 
domain, domestic, um, that is using the vernacular station, yes. much as it's in bringing more people into the industry, mm -hmm. at the same time, it's really uh, boxing them into their own local languages. And I think the necessity to be able to uh, focus on media that will be able to reach the wider population. I think as a country, we need to be thinking about that. How can we be able to uh, look at media as a unifying more, uh, platform mm -hmm. that a lot of people can be able to access and be able to uh, get the national conversation that's going so that our national conversation is right. not uh, very limited. But just one more thing, yes. I think uh, the digital migration that mm -hmm. took place in this country yes. uh, in 2015 mm -hmm. has really helped in terms of exposing the country to much more broadcast. Uh, because prior to that, we had a fairly limited reach. And following that, we have not only opened the market in terms of uh, greater reach to the country, yes. I think up, up by now, nearly 85% of the country is covered with signal. 85 of the region where the higher population of the nation is, is, is now covered. And I think uh, the, 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 the taking that step by government really helped open up to the country to more uh, reach of the media. And that will be able to spur development, able to spur create employment opportunities, and basically in enrich conversation that we're having in the country. Right, thank you. Let's hear from Dorothy. Good morning and good to see you. Right, welcome. What will be your comment? First, uh, first of all, uh, looking at uh, Rafael Tuju, uh, what really comes <laughs> up to mind uh, when you see Rafael Tuju reading news? <laughs> I see him as a former colleague. Uh -huh. We met at uh, various forums back then, uh -huh. and uh, he's been high flying and of course we are proud of him uh -huh. and uh, it's good to meet him again this morning mm -hmm. yeah uh, you, 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 uh, his execution today was fantastic uh, beautiful uh, my, my my job actually is uh, now on the, on the chopping board <laughs> uh, uh, seriously uh, i hope my my my, my 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 bosses are not watching this morning but, and say, oh we've got an idea for uh, the morning show <laughs> fortunately <laughs> yes he did come <laughs> He has moved on. He's saying not, he not, has not, moved not on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once a journalist, forever a journalist. Yeah, uh, I know. It's a calling, right? I know. Yeah. So um, I would wish to allay Professor Obonyo, Obonyo Sophias uh, about uh, the niche vernacular media. And uh, in as much as uh, I share his concerns about. Uh, people being boxed in, uh, let me paraphrase him and call ethnic cocoons, mm -hmm. um, it need not be an either or. I consider the natural extremely important as a development medium. And I say so from the fact that all the countries that I know which are well ahead of us, place a premium on their own languages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So our fixation with the, the Mzungu's uh, imported language could actually be our undoing. But having said so, English is also so entrenched that it will never be an either or. Mm -hmm. We cannot be in a dichotomy of we are either in vernacular or in English. Yes. It's an uh, both and, you know. Uh, we shall be wedded to English because I look for my paper uh, in the morning. And if I'm a country and I walk into any of those uh, vernacular papers, I'd want to see the thoughts at the local level. So there really ought not to be fear because uh, people express themselves best in the language they know most. Huh? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you that if I met uh, Mwishimiwa in the corridors out there, uh, I talk to him in the language of my grandmother because I know he'll feel very comfortable mm -hmm. talking the Luo than uh, talking English. It just comes naturally, mm -hmm. you know. And if I meet... Uh, Peter out there in Gatundu where my daughter is married, yes. <laughs> I'll struggle very hard to speak Kikuyu so that we connect. So I don't think there should be fear of vernacular 
you know mm -hmm. and uh, it's only when it is abused and it does happen uh, as it did in Rwanda that it was abused it does happen as it did in 2007 2008 when it was abused and we had uh, a, a what almost bordered on Rwanda and we thank God that uh, uh, Kofi Annan uh, and his team uh, prevented us from going down the precipice. But vernacular is absolutely important if we are going to get from the mark in which we find ourselves because people think best when they are talking their mother tongue. Right, so you don't think uh, vernacular is a double-edged uh, sword as well? It might be good also and swing on the other side of a pendulum. It, well, that is what I said. Yeah. It can be abused. It, it can be abused. But it need not be abused. It need not be abused. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, we, we shall be discussing that because we're seeing how it really evolved and why we are here uh, as far as uh, vernacular stations are concerned. Also, what, was it just, uh, you know, within the remit of the government to hold all these particular frequencies for vernacular stations be before we had them liberalized right now? Because it was under control of the Voice of Kenya then, but Right now, we have also private uh, uh, stations uh, running vernacular stations as well. But let's hear from uh, Peter Waruture, who is the director at uh, Mashariki Communications as well. Good morning, sir, and good to join us this morning. Uh, good morning. Yeah, good I'm morning. delighted to be here. Thank you. And let, let me first congratulate uh, Raphael uh -huh. uh, because he's done very well. He's done very well. And I think you should be inviting people like him. Uh, I know he cannot be available every day. Yes, yes. But in I fact, in a while, he can come and yes. read the news. Uh -huh. I, I, I never got uh, uh, experience on TV. Uh -huh. I was mostly in print. But, but, but you see, <laughs> it's very dangerous. You know, I took advantage of me, made sure that there was enough critique of the government. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I actually thought, I actually thought, how, how amazing that you are, you are reading all those uh, yeah. comments so about the president. I, and, I wondered, and I wondered how would he uncouple president. himself from yeah, all no, these he, stories. He, yeah? he, he might be in trouble. <laughs> I was, I was definitely you should have keep, skipped that item, maybe, no, I don't that know. Is, that, that is and say, okay, it, disclaimer, it, this is not my views. Not, I'm only, not, not only that, but yeah. it, is, it is a tribute to um, freedom of the media. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It is a tribute to just how, um, you know, uh, how robust yeah. our media is that, um, you know, we can do that. I think there were some years ago, and Dorothy would accept this, that there was some, you know, during our time, if, if that happened, I would be out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you can say that again. You'd be, <laughs> I think the interesting thing is that you'd be out of two jobs. Yes. <laughs> Cabinet and <laughs> Secretary General. Yes, yes. But anyway, uh, yes. you've done very well. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I, was, I was impressed at how calm you are and composed and and you are able to deliver it just like uh, the, the, the anchors do Thank it. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank and uh, secondly, I'm delighted to be here. When I was here, I, I worked here. and um, I know that, sir. Um, <laughs> there was no TV. <laughs> we didn't have TV. Yes. We had only one KBC, so yes. the good old KBC. Yeah. So we were only on print. So this didn't exist. And uh, I'm glad to see my paper, you know, Business Daily. This mm -hmm. is, I'm the one who started Business Day, but as Business Week at that time. Yes. It was a Business Week. It was Business Week weekly, and then it became... Oh, it was Business, business Weekly by then, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, right. It was anyway. Business Weekly, then it moved to Business Daily. Yeah, Business yes. Daily. Mm -hmm. But anyway, coming to the subject of the day, I look at uh, the media in terms of how it promotes national values and national development. And as a development economist, my concern is how the media can promote young people to see the future of this country, whether using the mainstream media, social media, uh, vernacular stations, how do they promote those national ideals? Because the focus, all our focus is to, you know, reduce unemployment, reduce poverty. But uh, what is the place of media in all those, in that sphere? And the media is the most trusted. You guys are the most trusted institution. Uh, I hope so, even after last year's uh, um, coverage of the elections. Mm -hmm. But I know in 2016 there was a survey by InfoTrack which said media is the most trusted institution. institution yes. So whatever you do, whatever you say, mm -hmm. you are influencing the mind of Kenyans. And that trust sometimes is abused. Mm -hmm. You know, that survey said 85% of Kenyans trust the media. That means 42 million Kenyans trust you. And how do you now translate that trust into promoting development, promoting the people's ideals, promoting unity. And what we saw last year, I don't think was, a, uh, was exactly in line with what mm -hmm. I would think that yes. you should be doing. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of conflict and the media should have been there trying to resolve those conflicts instead of taking sides, instead of taking political 
um, political side. And I'm glad your editor Mwora this morning is t talking about should the media be a uh, part or should, 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 should they be on this aside objective or totally impartial? That's a big question. Mm -hmm. Now coming to the media and, and, and vernacular stations, one of the things that I've not seen in this media, we have a lot of young people doing great things. This country has great things happening. Yes. But we don't hear them. We don't see them. We don't we listen to those uh, talk shows, we come here on TV and we are talking about politics, we are talking about taxes, we are talking about what the president has done and has not done. Mm. But when you look at great things that young people are doing, they should be there on the talk shows every morning, yes, every afternoon, every yeah. evening, mm -hmm. giving hope to this country. Mm -hmm. Sometimes last year I felt like, you know, this country is burning again, like, like 2007. Yes. And, and, and the media was not helping in that debate should have been more focused on uh, bringing people who can bring hope to this country. And where institutions fail, they bring them out. This survey talked about which are the worst institutions in this country. The ones that Kenyans don't trust. The judiciary, the anti-corruption authority. And you should have been questioning a lot about what are those institutions doing? Why are Kenyans angry about those institutions? What are they not seeing in those institutions? And this should have been in the mainstream media, NTV, the vernacular station, they should be discussing those issues. And they bring people who say, we are not happy with what is going on. Yes. If, you, if I'm, I have a, a matter in court, mm -hmm. and I know that I'm not going to get justice, it affects mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. It affects development. And a lot of business people are very unhappy with it. The way things go in the, you know, the judicial sector. But they can't speak out because, you know, business, business people are not, the, not like us who can come here mm -hmm. and say and rant and rave. They have their own decorum and they try to manage their things in a certain way. So it is difficult for them to come out. But your media can actually help them come out, interview them, get their views, and package that information. Thank you. Right, before we come to Rafael Tuju, I just give him time also to, of course, uh, blow off steam a bit. We want to take a short break. When we come back, of course, we shall hear from him and uh, get a bit of history of how we're performing as well. And uh, just before we do that, also, can see reactions on Twitter here. Uh, where we have people uh, also congratulating you, Rafael Tuju. Yeah? <laughs> we have economist Joey saying, for a moment I thought Rafael Tuju has switched off from politics back to media. Yeah, <laughs> seeing him this morning. Happy to see Dr. Kungu saying, happy to see Rafael Tuju on NTV. I had thought I am live, NTV was hacked, right? <laughs> also, we have Jeremiah Karuki saying, once a news anchor, always a news anchor. That was a jewel moment from the past. Tuju still a power in the newsroom right also we have george kisuni saying yes uh, kind of uh, uh, a refreshing moment with the cs uh let me go back there he says kind of refreshing moment there with cs uh, rafael tuju yeah he becomes a, a guest anchor to read news on m live and tv also good stuff from cs he does this thing with passion honorable rafael tuju still on top of things this is what alex lomakui is saying also on social media so Welcome back. You're watching Leadership Forum here on AM Live, where today we're discussing the role of media, all the centrality of media in the development of Kenya. And we're seeing how media has evolved over time and uh, where it is currently. And I'm holding court this morning with the CS Rafael Tuju, who is also a veteran journalist, also a former Minister of Information in this country. Also, we have with us as well Dorothy Quay. She is a consulting editor and a former also editor here at the Nation Media Group. We have with us as well Professor Levi Bonio, who is the Dean of Media or the Dean of Communication and Media Studies at Daysta University. Also, we have with us as well uh, Peter Warutere, who is a communication expert, Director Mashariki Communications, also is an economist, analyst on emerging development issues, strategic communications advisor, and also is a weekly columnist, columnist with the Daily Nation as well. We have a tweet here from Catherine Malay. She's saying, wow, that was so good from <laughs> Rafael Tuju. Thought he had taken over from you, that is me, kudos, <laughs> right? I said, kudos, sir. <laughs> right, let's, let's just continue with the conversation. People yes. are still uh, congratulating you. You still have it. You still have the flair. But looking at the brand of journalism that we have right now, 
uh, compared to your epic of time then, the, your dispensation, and where you know you actually set the trend. You, Catherine Casavulli, we had uh, Lydia Magnassi as well, we had uh, Kathleen Openda, Zen Virgi, who went to the CNN as well. Now we're talking about electronic media. Do, we, do you think in any way that uh, the, the ball has been dropped along the way? Right, because by then we never saw a lot of catwalking and, you know, sort of, is this maybe something that is just to allure the, the audience to also, you know, seek out for more eyeballs as well? Yes. Well, I, I think um, there were challenges of our time and there are challenges of this time. Yes. Um, the truth of the matter is the world is develop, developing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a time when, for example, I was looking at some of the comments of, of the Wanainchi on the, the president's performance, uh, or at least the Jubilee government performance. That would not have happened 25, 30 years ago. Yes. The, the, the Wanainchi would not have had the opportunity to express themselves in that way and get away with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, there's democratization of the media. So, of course, it means that then people can now uh, plug in more and it puts challenge on say for example those of us in government to you know be more responsive to be able to educate people more and so forth now the same uh, you can say with the with the, with the television uh, arena and radio arena mm -hmm. uh, professor was talking about the mushrooming of all the vernacular stations yes. and the challenges that it brings and uh, dorothy was uh, you know, had different uh, comments on the same. I, I think we just have to appreciate that, of course, first of all, the, the mass media is an instrument of socialization. At the end of the day, what do you decide to do with it? And in the media, there are contradictions, several contradictions, as in real life. And how do we deal with these challenges? Take, for example, uh, the nation newspapers on the nation TV or the TV stations. All of a sudden, now you're facing competition from social media which was not there before. Um, I get a lot more news from social media than I get from t TV. I don't have to sit mm -hmm. in front of a TV to get my news. Uh, a lot of it, I get it on the social, on the social media. And uh, so that is new competition for the mainstream media houses. Then, of course, you have to appreciate that more and more, the media is more for infotainment. Is so if the media house is not entertaining, yes. then they're going to lose the eyeballs. And media is a business, in, in which case you need some rating by the advertising agencies and the institutions which uh, support media by way of uh, buying uh, media space, because that's how you pay for the bills and you pay the salaries and so forth. Yes. So there are those contradictions and you have to work with all of those. Mm -hmm. So really, I, I don't want to be prescriptive and to pass judgment that, well, things were better those days or things are better now. I think we just have to appreciate that there are new emerging challenges. Mm -hmm. I mean, Professor here is familiar with the research on um, uses and gratification of the media. I mean, um, the, uh, the uh, vernacular stations, you know, they are all concerned to get an audience. They, what, what do people want to listen to? And in fact, in Tanzania, they were talking about all the, the vernacular stations becoming what they call Ndombolo stations because all the music is the same. <laughs> because that's, what, <laughs> cause that's what, what people want to listen to. Yes. So those contradictions are there, those challenges are there, and I think the key thing is how do we deal with these new challenges and uh, make the best out of these new opportunities right. that, w that new technology gives to us. Right. New challenges, new technology, what it has given to us. How can we also brand the, 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 the current sort of journalism that we do have, uh, Professor Obonio, currently? If you may just brand it, uh, looking at all 360 angles of maybe the consumption of news, how would you say this is the brand of journalism that we do have in Kenya? What will that tag be? 
Maybe let me just address uh, probably the fears that Dorothy had about uh, vernacular. I'm not saying that uh, we need to shove the vernacular stations to the side, no. Yes. But what's the editorial formula, the content packaging of the stations that are broadcasting in vernacular so that it is more diversified? So the fact that you are broadcasting in, say, uh, Luya does not mean that your content has to be so parochial. It's just Kakamega, for example, mm -hmm. but rather, can we expose the people in Kakamega to what's going on in Muranga, in Mombasa, in terms of the content? I think that's, that's, that's where I would be headed. So you're not really never gazing to what is really happening within your region, but of course you have a wider scope of what is happening also in yeah. other regions. As one yes. country, you need to, I mean, this idea of you, <coughs> you were born in a village, you went to the local primary school, secondary school at the university in the village, and then you become a professor in the village, and then, <laughs> and then you are listening to the same station. And then how the chancellor of that particular university as well. Yes, yes, how do we expose this person <laughs> to the other parts of the country when they are, we're not saying that they should not listen to their local station, they should, but now it's the responsibility, the duty of that station. And I think this is where the conversation around, uh, con who are the kind of journalists that we are training that will then be hired in these stations that will expose, will look at the task that they have for their audience to not just give them the local double or so to speak of the local because <laughs> they'll be playing local music they'll be talking about the local issues but yes talk about the local issues that's fine but also infuse it with uh, uh, the international material national international material yes. you look at the broadcast in the morning that the honorable minister was reading and we notice what's happening in the u.s what's happening elsewhere in the world mm -hmm. That's not your local, your, your normal affair. If, yes. you, if you come to what you're going to broadcast at 1, at 7, at 9, I mean, there's less exposure to international news, even with the, with, within the country, within the national stations. You take a newspaper of this type, and you have how many pages, and you wonder how much of international news is covered in that. But in terms of the sophistication of coverage that we're having in, in our journalism, yes. mm -hmm. I think we're moving quite a great deal towards that. And I think, uh, to, to agree with what uh, Banatuju is saying, mm -hmm. th these are different times. And so we don't expect a replication of the journalism of 1980 in, uh, in 2018. So, I mean, the, 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 the audience is different, is much more sophisticated, and we have to reflect that sophistication in what we are, in what we are doing. We recognize, of course, the changes are not just in terms of technology, but also legislative. What is the space that has been provided, the Constitution 2010, and the guarantees that is provided? Prior to 2010, the only legal framework that you had in practicing me, there was Section 79 of the old Constitution. Now we have, if you look at the new, the, not the new Constitution anymore, but the 2010 Constitution, you have Article 34, 33, 35, mm -hmm. you have all these other pieces of legislation that has opened the space that have empowered the journalist to be much more robust in, in being able to say the things that they're able to say. And this framework is providing this great opportunity to be able to speak. But relating to the theme of the day, which is uh, the question of development, much as the audience and the public is focusing, uh, the, the, the notion, I like the Ndubolo journalism for the frame, I think we need to explore. Because there's so much entertainment. But also, one of the advantages that we see in the vernacular stations is focus on development. Those stations, much as they are talking about local things, but sometimes that local thing is how to do agriculture, how to work on uh, issues that are going to uh, improve the lifestyles of the individuals who are living in that region. There's a station, for example, in Western Kenya where you can actually advertise if you're selling a chicken and you're looking for market, you just need to call the station and say, I have a chicken, I need uh, to expose, I mean, to dispose of it. Anybody looking for a chicken, I'm in this village. And that, that's, that's in, in, in improving commerce. It's at a very local level, yes, but we're doing that. So we're, there's journalism at the national level, but there's also journalism that is taking place. Unfortunately, most of these guys are not as exposed to what we call the normative journalism as it were. Yes. But this is the 
frame I think that we are playing in. So you have the, 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 the macro at this level, which is what uh, we train in the university and say go and do this and they're doing them. But there's also the macro at the local level, which is really plugging into what people are doing. And, 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 and as while there's maybe a lot of entertainment, etc., yes. at the national level, you actually have a lot of development content that is being focused on at the local level, uh, which people simply talk about what they are going, what going through. It's now rains are coming, start planting, and I think that's positive. Uh, don't, I mean, there's, for a research that has just been completed, I found that crime in Western Kenya has been, has been falling down courtesy to local radio stations because people will uh, text to the station and say, we are under attack. And the newscaster will repeat that mm -hmm. constantly, saying, oh, we are under attack. The, this home in this village, some people are currently attacking them. That should help. And so there will be no escape for local thugs. Thank you. So the, the, in, in a great Thank way, you. we are having the media mm -hmm. being uh, uh, domesticated by individuals and by regions, and they're using it in different ways, which I think is positive. Right. So uh, let's come to uh, Dorothy. Uh, w do you think also the media is setting the agenda, or are you picking cue uh, or cues from uh, one inch as well, because uh, uh, if we may look at uh, the recent uh, splashes that we normally have uh, in the dailies, uh, like one I think that will really drew a lot of luck. If you may just pick it up, this is uh, from the touch screen, uh, the star. Even when I just woke up this morning, I wondered, uh, 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 yeah, I eat Skuma Wiki every day, right? And this is uh, what we had there on the front page of stars: Obado ate Skuma Wiki for three good days. I was saying, well, I was saying really? I skuma wiki like myself, maybe for two good weeks. Is, is that a splash? So uh, what is the general consumption of, of uh, you setting the agenda? Uh, are we, are we s s also media spewing up a lot of politics to the public? And then when we say Kenyans, they love politics, is it them that have, they do love politics? Or the media is actually giving them a belly full of politics? <laughs> That is a good question, uh, uh, Dibal. Uh, my personal view is that uh, the media can play a very positive role in um, steering the readership in, uh, or the listenership or the viewership, for that matter, in the direction that it ought to. And um, I feel that... Uh, as media, we have become too sensational. The 2010 constitution may have brought diversification. And I agree with uh, uh, Meshmiwa Tuju that we cannot go back where we were. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I am of the opinion that if the train derails, you don't just leave it there. It can be brought back on the rails. Mm -hmm. And I think it is the duty of the media to do that. One of the dangers of the sensationalism, which includes um, high-stakes politics, is that um, it's very rapid. And in that rapidity, uh, everybody's struggling or to beat the other, you know, especially when we are talking of the uh, dailies. Sometimes it is difficult to uh, uh, scoop anybody because uh, the digital media brings it so early that, you know, uh, th those days when you could get a tip and go and painstakingly bring a story that you had well researched are gone. Uh, if you do that, uh, you will not even appear because uh, even WhatsApp will beat you. Mm -hmm. But the trouble is, how can we use that opportunity, you know, mm -hmm. to, for the, for the better, for, for the good of Wanaichi, instead of just pandering to the winds of um, uh, uh, the politicians, mm -hmm. because... The politicians also love to be read, to hear their voices, and so on and so forth, and to stay in the media. And um, I think that uh, if we go on the way we are going, even the 
media itself is going to lose. Let me tell you, early this week I got uh, a WhatsApp text from uh, a child who is a friend of the family. I call her a child although she's in her 30s and that tells you how old I am. <laughs> and uh, uh, she was complaining about the quality. She had just been home yes. and she had gone back to Rome where she teaches English. Okay. And she was complaining about the quality of the newspapers. The quality of the newspapers? Yes. You know? Uh, in as much as we are using English, yes. and my view is that if we use English, let us use it with excellence. Mm -hmm. If we use Kiluya, let us use excellent Luya. If we use Kiswahili, the same. And this business of just throwing anything in the paper mm -hmm. ought to end. But when people pick and lift things from the social media and throw them in the papers, then even the English is lost. Mm -hmm. Yes, the people who are, uh, who are congratulating Mishmi Watuju this morning, it's because of the diction. It's excellent, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. We people who did debate in school know how important it was, and it was one of the points that were rated. But you don't see it, and it's going down. Mm -hmm. So how can we recover that? Newspapers can be an avenue of education, and I know that Nation has a newspapers in education project, yes. which is very important. But how can we extend that quality, you know, uh, uh, that is intended or th that is expected of a national newspaper, mm -hmm. you know, into daily readership, you know. I'll be told that this paper is a lot bigger than the one that I joined the nation with uh, uh, more than 30 years ago, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, this year I celebrated 40 years in journalism. Mm -hmm. And it used to be like 24 pages. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so now if we are talking of um, uh, how many pages we are talking almost of 70. 56 pages, mm -hmm. that is almost three times more. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and if the staff is not being increased, and if they are all caught up in the rat race of bringing uh, uh, the, the latest, mm -hmm. then even that latest even the best editor will be unable to read it in time for going to the press. So even the very ethics and what we are doing is not right, you know. I think we need to be selective Thank in you. what we are going to run and to insert quality into it because we offend the readership when we just throw anything, anything. Mm -hmm. in the paper. <clears throat> and for, for them that are really looking uh, for the daily is, and the media as the epitome of excellence, yes. it really, you know, uh, raises scruples uh, and uh, they take uh, really sp a special average with the fact that maybe the training that mm -hmm. we have from the universities also is, is, is in big question. Uh, mm -hmm. The quality of journalism and uh, the graduates that we are churning out from universities are, is a big question. If you come to you, Peter, uh, maybe you can actually also chime in on this. You think the, the quality has tapered off with time, that we don't have the veracity and uh, that authority that a, a daily nation will hold with its splash and the stories as well. Uh, the believability that uh, you can actually say this story has been nicely narrated, nicely told, uh, the turn of phrases are good. Uh, w what will be your reading? Yeah, thank uh, thank. Uh, <coughs> Excuse well, me. I, I said in the beginning, Yes. one, the media is a very important institution. And I think Rafa said, you are an instrument of change. And this we cannot take away from you. And the challenges we went through during our time are different from what you are going through today. I mean, those days, because we are fewer, we, there are people who are not, uh, th there was no open space, there was no free space. A lot of people are not willing to talk about mm -hmm. hard issues. And so that's how we got scoops. Yes. I did a lot of scoops when I was working for Nation because I could get information that other people didn't have. And the next day, it would be a splash. Nobody else would have it, standard would, that wouldn't have it, to not be on TV. So it, it was my scoop. Mm -hmm. These days, I don't think you can have a real scoop. By, by the time you, you, you publish this paper, or by the time you come, uh, you know, news one o'clock or in the evening news, these things have been on social media. You've already consumed that from they the social have, media, yes. You know, and they have, the, you know, the, 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 
it has mutated so much that you don't even know where it started sometimes. And coming now to the media, the most important thing, even social media is part of the media, mm. that media space. Yes. There are a lot of fake news. Every day we see a lot of fake news. And not here, not just in Kenya, in Africa, in, uh, in the US, uh, you know, about Trump, about Russia, about Putin. There are a lot of fake news. The most important thing is that when I, uh, when I buy the business daily, I buy the nation. I want to see something different from what I've seen in the social media. There are so many times you see, you get a, you know, breaking news or something on social media. And when you read the newspaper or when you watch TV, it wasn't entirely, it wasn't entirely how it was portrayed. Very simple example, when uh, my good friend, uh, Senator Mutula Kilonzo, was taken ill, I, it said the breaking news was that he collapsed. Then he posted himself, says, I didn't collapse. You see, it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. the, he was unwell, but he, you know, the way it was portrayed that he collapsed. Yes. He said, I didn't collapse, but I'm not well. So when I buy the business daily, I would expect to see when the CBK governor is talking, what he's talking about. It's not what I saw in social media. There is more clarity. So the challenge is there that in this whole space, you have the fake news. You have even, you know, fake news pendlers who you think that are giving you the correct information. But you have to judge and you have to be objective and analyze that information. So I would want to see, especially on business news, because I'm more concerned about business news, the development news, more analysis, more clarity. That I, yes, I have seen this. Yes. When I wake up at 5 a.m., I saw this on social media. But then when I buy that newspaper, I get more clarity, I get more details. I get a lot of information that I'm not going to get. But because what, social media what, what, is so could be, what could be affecting that delivery of quality? Is it the speed of uh, delivery that uh, we don't get to actually fact check and call up and find, well, did he collapse? Did he actually choke on, uh, or, or, on a fishbone or whatever that uh, maybe uh, perhaps uh, the senator will have choked on? That one, we, yes. One, the most important, you want to be real. You know, you, know, you, want to, you want to produce that information in real time. In real time. So you want to give it now because if you don't give it now, yes. somebody else will. Mm -hmm. And so, what 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 would make you what would make you watch NTV or buy a newspaper if I already have all the information that I need thank you. from other sources? Right. So there's a lot of pressure on you guys. No, thank you. But uh, you must you must now differentiate yourselves by ensuring that you don't fall into that trap of being in the in a pressure position that you cannot go beyond what everybody else is thank saying. You and do a bit of analysis and research. Fantastic. And of course, Rafael Tuju, you've yeah. been, uh, as a Secretary General of uh, Jubilee, sometimes uh, at, uh, have to correct what medium has actually you know, portrayed, uh, maybe misinformation, and you call a press conference and say, no, this is not the information that uh, we've, we have on the ground. These are the real facts. So do you think the quality, the ball has dropped, you know, have fallen through the cracks as well over time? Uh, I think one thing I want to reassure you about is that... Uh, in the long run, mm -hmm. substance always prevails instead of what is fickle. Yes. And you talked about, for example, cutwalk journalism <laughs> or cutwalk presentation and so forth. Yes. You know, cutwalk journalism. Cut, cut <laughs> journalism and, or, or, or even presentation. Yes. I mean, some, uh, sometimes I'm a critique. I mean, I, I see a presentation on TV and I think there's more emphasis on the cutwalk than on the substance mm -hmm. of whatever is being presented. Um, and that can only go up to a point. Yes. In the end, people are actually interested in what is substance. When a newspaper, for example, you've just given the story of somebody eating skuma wiki for three days, and if they think that is the biggest, uh, the best way of, say, catching the market, probably for their edition, which uh, target those areas where probably the governor comes from and people don't uh, eat uh, other foods apart from skuma wiki for, for, for three days. And indeed, I would say that skuma wiki is more healthy than meat anyway. I mean, some of us are trying to eat more of it. But, <laughs> but, but I mean, the long and short of it is that you can do sensational stuff. You can do things which are cheap in some ways to try and get attention. But in the long run, people read through it. And they say, look, I cannot trust this presenter. I cannot trust 
this newspaper. Mm -hmm. I cannot trust this media because they're just sensational. Uh, you know, they have this fantastic headline, but when I look at the story, the headline was just to make you buy the paper. Mm -hmm. In the long run, there's really no, no substance mm -hmm. in whatever mm -hmm. they say. So you should not underestimate the sophistication and the cleverness of our audiences. So um, you, 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 the, the newspapers, the media houses, uh, you know, television and, and so forth can go that sensational way, but within a very short time, people begin to ignore you, so to speak, and mm -hmm. you will not last long. And I, you and me know that some of your competitors who have tried to be as sensational as possible, it, it is a flash in the pan. They may have a very sudden growth of their circulation, of their rating, but in the long run, do people trust them? Mm -hmm. And then they begin to lose. So I'd like to encourage you, um, read, mm -hmm. be intelligent, have substance. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're well groomed, but don't worry too much about that. Eh? What is important is the substance that you come out with. <laughs> so it's not really <laughs> the grooming as well. Yeah, the, yeah it's, it's part of the package. It's part of the panel. It's yeah. part of the package because of the medium you're using. But if you are empty, mm -hmm. it is going to show within a very short time that, well, you have a great smile, you have a nice, uh, you know, suit and the rest of it, but uh, you have no substance. No substance and, at all. And people will know. Okay. And then you lose it. Okay. Uh, yeah. People will know, then you lose it. Uh, is it because uh, there is no broad research uh, that uh, also the advent of uh, data journalism, I think, is really coming to the fore? And where we have institutions that don't really have the data and they don't have a robust, robust research team, then how do we also collaborate other institutions that they have the research and they just shelved away, but there's no that connectivity you know, between this particular research firms and of course also uh, the media, where there's a wide bath of information as we can hear that uh, yes, maybe we're not doing enough of research, uh, in, in, enough of uh, quality checks as well, right? Let's just hear from Professor or any of you that can pick it up. Let, let me try to also frame what he's just said in a different way. You know, sometimes this a, a journalist, particularly on television, comes with too much noise. Too much noise. Uh, yes. <laughs> too I much mean, noise. In what sense? Uh, <laughs> for example, uh, let, let me take an example of a lady. You put on so much hair, and you're reading news, and still adjusting your hair. What does the audience focus on? Mm -hmm. And that's, it begins to distract. I mean, it's talking about how you are groomed, etc. And yes, I think yes. sometimes uh, the, 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 the cut work is good for whatever. But you, when I'm sitting down at 9 p.m. watching news, I want news. Uh, and I only have got so much time to listen to that story. So we should get out of the way and give you news. Give me yes. the story so yes. that I can go and do other things. But, but coming to the story, I mean, the question you are, you are raising, I, What's the budget reallocation for covering stories in the media houses? So that if we were going to be interested in covering Migingo, for example, it's way out there. How much budget are you allocating to the journalist who is going to start investigating that story to enable them to go into the depth in order to inform us about the intricacies? And I'm just using Migingo as an example. It could be anywhere else that the story is taking place. So the question of their location. However, there are agencies that are, are interested particularly in data journalism. For mm -hmm. example, there's an organization now that um, focuses on that, helping journalists be able to get involved in data journalism. To what extent are we providing the opportunity for the journalists to plug into the resources that are available from these agencies that can then be brought to inform and enrich stories? Mm -hmm. Much as we say, we think that uh, it's, it's not easy to break a story, but we're seeing New York Times, Washington Post mm -hmm. occasionally coming out with stories that the rest of the country is just, I mean, they're breaking it. Mm -hmm. So the age of breaking the stories is not gone. It's just a question of the patience, the resources, time, financial, uh, that we're going to as media houses to apply to that story. To, to that particular story that needs to be covered so that it can be covered in such a way that it be able to inform the public. And if you look at the, the, the last while, in terms of the, for, for example, the subscription, New York Times, Washington, Washington Post, when people thought that the, this would be on the decline because of the critical 
role that they're playing, the subscriptions are picking up. And so in the same way, to what extent can we, in our own media, uh, looking at this, our own media market, if there's that focus, we're not so worried about whether somebody ate skumawiki or not, mm -hmm. but maybe the quality of the skumawiki. I mean, go, go back <laughs> the quality to of the skumawiki. That, 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 I mean, something more <laughs> than just that somebody ate it, but I mean, give us a better story around that skumawiki. Mm -hmm. uh, th that will attract Thank the you. public to the story much more than just that somebody uh, ate skumawiki. Right. Uh, Dorothy, you are staring at the leech to say yeah. something. Yeah, uh, I, I really um, agree with what uh, Professor Bonio is saying, that um, uh, it is important and uh, to bring substance, and it is possible to bring substance. And um, having given 20 years of my life to this organization, mm -hmm. and almost half of them in the field I know that they did it then when they had less resources, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. That was the time you could go to the field and investigate a story. You are given a driver and you are going away for even a week. And when you come back, the story is a page one story showing a national disaster. Eh? Like maize rotting, mm -hmm. you know, in the fields just because the people entrusted with the agriculture docket are not building silos. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is almost cyclic. Mm -hmm. Now and then, we find occasions where farmers are crying, you know. We talk of development. It starts in the stomach. And um, farmers who cannot be uh, properly remunerated for their efforts are not going to have the, the uh, motivation uh, to go to the field, mm -hmm. you know. So... It's like this year we have had a bumper harvest. Next year we are having nothing because last year we were so demotivated because our crop was being sold at throwaway. Yes. And these are the stories that the editors can focus on. Mm -hmm. And these are the stories that the editors can, uh, th this is the case that the editors can put forward during the budgeting first mm -hmm. of the year to say we need so much for our investigative reporters because a good investigative reporter is not going to throw hints here and there and if it is substantive I know some of the things that we are worrying about being scooped on are just so trivial that yes. I wouldn't mind if somebody scooped me of them mm -hmm. but the real substance is there you know right now there is a big story in the extractive industry, yes. you know, and you just see it once in a while. It's not a consistent story, especially at this time mm -hmm. when we are getting in that direction, big way, you know. Yes. And yet, in as much as it spells development for certain areas, it also spells doom, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. when you destroy the environment, you know, yes. or when you deny a community its rights and they go into an individual's pocket. The, the, the returns go into an individual's pocket. Yes. So we still have big stories out there and they call for patience. So the budgeting point that Professor Bonio raised is extremely important yes. and it needs to be followed up actively. Yeah? I do remember um, uh, that um, Sometime in my relationship with this organization, I took a break, yes. you know. I always call it Nation Phase 1, when I was out there in the field, mm -hmm. and Nation Phase 2, yes. when I was on the river, it's best. And it has given me the best of bo both worlds, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because I can point out a badly investigated story, and I can also de edit the errors, because 11 years on the revision desk yes. did a lot of good to me, mm -hmm. you know. I know what quality means. So... I have that best of both worlds. But both of them need to be financed. You need to finance good uh, revised editors, and you need to uh, finance good uh, journalists in the field. During that break, I uh, uh, had alliance with an organization, Interlink Rural Information Service. And I'm proud to say that it raised some of the best journalists who are practicing now, you know? Mm -hmm. And they are in the papers out there, you know, because 
they had the nitty gritty of how to investigate and they also knew how to write a good story. They are still doing it. And uh, it was financed by donors. By, you know? Financed by donors. Yeah, yeah. Interlink Rural Information Service was donor funded. Fantastic. So when the, uh, when the donors started to tighten the screws, I said, wait a minute, nation never sucked me. So I came back and uh, told Wangedi, look, you people never sucked me. I've come back for my job. And I got my job back. And I don't regret the 11 years on the revision desk. Thank you. You know? Mm. So we need quality. We need quality in the field. We need good investigation. And it needs to be packaged properly. I hate to read a badly edited story. Right. Badly edited story. Mm -hmm. Resources is coming to the fore. And we'll come back to government because uh, government also have been denying uh, the media their payment they, for the longest want time. Our, yeah, the <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, we want our money. Yeah. <laughs> For, for the longest time, and now that you are uh, in the upper reaches of government and you've been in this field, you know how, of course, uh, we need that money also to, of course, finance uh, the, the stories that we do, uh, pay well, the journalists as well. If now we have that particular uh, tightness and uh, the government also taking that particular advertisement that you want to run it as a department, then how does it also affect the quality of the journalism? Uh, because the government is a biggest spender that, all, of course, we rely on. But let's hear just from Peter, as uh, also you, you're preparing your thoughts, because we need a good answer from the government. Okay, <laughs> before good <laughs> Peter. Yes, yes. I, I must say, this is a good, healthy debate. Yes, thank you. Okay? And I was, I was trying to figure out, as you go on, uh, we must struggle with the question of, why do we still buy newspapers? If you have all this information from social media and the fake news and so on, why do I still buy my newspapers every morning? And sometimes I tell my vendor, I'm not going to buy it. This is how am I going to survive if you don't buy my newspaper today? Yes. You know, I'm here because I want to earn a living. And when I buy the newspaper, I find value in it. There are a lot of things that I find in these papers that are not anywhere else. Why do we watch TV? Every, every evening, 9 o'clock news. I, I, I wouldn't want to miss 9 o'clock news. Mm -hmm. Although I know what, everything that has happened during the day, I still watch that news. So that tells you that we have confidence that you are delivering some value that we appreciate what you are doing and the people appreciate what you are doing. The problem comes when, like uh, Dorothy says, I read a story, badly edited, no facts put together very well, or I watch TV and find whatever I know is not exactly, you know, you, you, you are not adding value to what I've known. The whole day I've been from morning up to seven in the evening until I go home, I know so much and you are not adding value to what I, I already know. From the day and if that happens a couple of times and i say well, maybe i don't want, i don't need to watch those news and i see the real issue comes with the focus yes our media is very good at sometimes flashing a story mm -hmm. like uh, rafa has said a very good story tomorrow you don't see it you don't stay with the story it's dropped it's gone until something big happens and then you find that story and then you go, oh three months ago that thing was still mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and now you're breaking it like it's, it's a new story. Yes. A story always, I think the way we were taught journalism, a story always has some background. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even when we, we started breaking stories, we were told, this thing happened, there was something like that, it was related. So you go to the background and read. And I don't think, I don't see how much journalists are doing research on what they write about. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because of the pressure, you editors are giving the pressure that they must deliver within a given time. And they must deliver that day, not the next day. Yes. So we need a lot of research. There are a lot of research institutions in this country that have a lot of information that doesn't come out. Yes. I, 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 I was looking at um, you know the debate on the VAT on fuel. It's a good debate, and there are people who are angry about that is going to increase the cost of living, and the government is saying no, we need this money. There are a lot of people in this country who don't pay taxes. And we can tap them through this informal tax. I mean, it's, it's not a direct tax, on the, it is an indirect tax. Mm -hmm. But if you went to Kipra, for example, you go to ISPAC, Institute of Certified Public Accountants, you go to some other researchers, yes. they have, the, you know, KPMG, Pricewaterhouse, they have done a lot of work on taxation. Yes. And you're going to find a lot of information that justifies or tells you what is the essence of this type of tax. Mm. What can it do yes. for development? Yes. And these are the issues that need to come out because I sometimes I struggle with this feeling like are our news people and our news institutions just sailing with the tide? 
because you cannot be sailing with the tide. You must be like a facilitator in a meeting, and I do a lot of that in a um, stakeholder, stakeholder meeting. You go to a, to a meeting in the morning and everybody has different views. There is a crisis. People are fighting different views. At the end of the day, you must come and say, okay, it's four o'clock, guys. We must now, what is the takeaway from this meeting? What is our action plan? So everybody must converge and say, this is my focus. So if you find that there are a lot of things happening, you have to be able to bring them back, like Dorothy was saying, bring them back to the track. What is our theme? What is our take on this story? And that is what differentiates you from those others who are just flashing the news, sending information, and saying this is bad for this country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying tax is good or bad. Nobody likes paying taxes. I don't like paying taxes, but I have to, mm -hmm. because I know if I don't pay those taxes, there will be no development. And then we have issues about how it is, how it is applied. Mm -hmm. And bringing back to the Sukuma Week story, I, I, I was sort of amused because it reminded me of that, um, 1974 uh, media movie called The Front Page, mm -hmm. where you had all these journalists covering a hanging of a character called Al William because he had shot a policeman. Mm -hmm. And virtually all the media were, were focused on what did he have for dinner. You know, one of the flamboyant guys dressed like you very nicely with those, you know, mm -hmm. was saying this guy had this for dinner. These are the prayers he said. This is what the message he sent to his mother. But in the meantime, that character went and he, he, he was being examined by a psychiatrist. He showed the psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys wanted to know where did he get the gun from? And that was the other. The others are just covering the hanging. Will the guy be hung tomorrow? Now there'll be no hanging and so on. But this character is focused on where did he get the gun from? Because he was being examined in a room in, and, you know, and the police uh, chief was there. Mm -hmm. And nobody could tell where the gun came from. But this guy was able to find that it was actually the sheriff's gun, which the guy, the sheriff himself, he didn't snatch the gun, but the sheriff gave the gun to the psychiatrist because he wanted to say, this guy, when you shot that policeman, show me exactly what you did, we thought, mm -hmm. and what you did. Thank you. And he took the gun and shot. Mm -hmm. So, and the story comes out at the end, but you could see nine out of 10 journalists were not focused on the message. Oh. This guy alone was focused on why is this happening? There were a lot of accusations. And this is the kind of thing we want to see. Where is the real story? Where is the real story? Where is the real story? Thank you. Rafael yeah. Tuju, uh, maybe you can address the issue of uh, the payment. Yes, I think, I think it's very important. Uh, the, uh, I really appreciate what my colleagues have talked about. And I think uh, this kind of discussions enables us to understand something that I've talked about uh, a few days ago, and that is independence and interdependence. You've just alluded to the fact that the government is the biggest trading partner. Yes. If the government has no resources, then the government will not be able to pay its bills, including to the media houses. Mm. The government will not be able to pay its bills to, you know, uh, teachers, doctors, and all that. So we all need each other. And we always talk about the media being the fourth estate. Mm. It is incumbent on the media, for example, to explain what this tax is all about. And I must commend the nation for finally rising to the occasion mm -hmm. to explain to people what this is all about. I think uh, he's just alluded to the fact that, for example, Kenyans, out of about 19 to 20 million people in the labor market, or adults who are able to vote, mm -hmm. only 3.2 are in the tax 3 net. 3.2 million. 3.2 million yes. are in the tax net. Yes. Yeah. And out of these 3.2 million, I was reading one of, I think it was in the nation or one of the local papers, out of these 3.2 million who file their income tax returns, close to 50% of them file nil returns. Mm. That means that probably only 1.7 to 2 million people actually are supporting the rest of the country in terms of real taxes that you and me have in our pay slip called payee. Mm -hmm. So if that happens, and then on the other hand, you see the number of vehicles being registered every day, every month. Where is this money coming from? Those who are building houses along Mulolongo, Ruaka, Thika Road, multi-story buildings, you know, Dandora and the rest of it, to what extent are they in the uh, tax bracket. 
in this country, we used to have what was called the hat tax during the colonial time, where, where everybody, as long as you are old enough to have your hat, then you had to pay taxes. Because soon you'll be having kids going to school, you'll be using the road, you'll be taking advantage of the social facilities like health centers, medicine, and the rest of it. So you had to pay taxes. And in fact, during that time, you, you could not go to the market if you are not paid your taxes because the police and the chief will organize to, 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 to chase you. It was very unpopular, and thanks to our independence, no more of that happened. But if you go to the countries, the UK, where this idea of hard tax came from, even until today, property tax is the biggest source of income for government. In this country, those who are having many flats, many houses, many properties and the rest of them, mm -hmm. a lot of them do not pay taxes. Yes. And yet, they want the roads, they are filling the roads with, <laughs> with their vehicles and the rest of it. So I think it is essential that all of us educate each other on this and the media is, should not see themselves as in confrontation with government on these issues. I think you should be able to understand, for example, if we did not have if we do not have a balanced budget because we are not raising the money that we need to balance the budget, there's going to be pressure on the shilling. Thank you. If there's pressure on the shilling, it devalues. Actually, Kenyans are going to pay more for fuel because of a devalued shilling Thank you. that they would pay just yeah. because of these taxes. So it's very, very complex, and I think it is incumbent on all of us to be able to explain this to Kenyans. Right. Let, let me just go to uh, Professor Obonyo. Of course, we're winding up and I want to just give you 30 seconds because we're strapped for time as well. I know there's a lot that we can discuss this morning, but apparently, of course, also, we have to uh, pay uh, our taxes and we have also to, <laughs> yeah, take a station break as well. Let's just begin with you or uh, your closing remarks. Uh, 30 seconds. Uh, where are we headed? As a, we, as, a, as a media fraternity? Before we go to where we're headed, I think we need 30 to, seconds. to appreciate um, yes. uh, development content in the media. For example, the weekend publications, both uh, print and uh, TV uh, and radio, there's a lot of material on agriculture, ma material that focuses attention of the public on how to improve their being. And I think that's really a very good direction that the media is taking, and we should encourage that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dorothy. Um, thank you, Ainea. And I think that um, the points that uh, the minister raised, the CS raised, are extremely important, but I would like to see more stories uh, analyzing who is actually eating our money because I think that the uh, fairness across the board is not there at all. When you have uh, somebody earning 3,000 and another one earning 2 million, there's no justice there. And so long as we have these income disparities, a story that we need to be thoroughly analyzed, uh, who is eating our money, yes. you know, we, we are still just hanging in there. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Very good point. Uh, so I think Peter for me, uh, what I would like to see is, uh, you know, you guys are doing a good job, like I've said, greater focus on corruption. Yes. Because this is what is eating our society. It's not, it's not the taxes, it's not what you do every day. Yes. Greater focus on corruption. Like Rafael says, how can you not be paying taxes and you are driving a V8, which mm -hmm. we know costs 15, 20 million. Yes. There is a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. And those are the hard issues that you guys should focus on. Thank you. And Thank I you, Peter. Well. Right. Uh, Rafael, well, finally, well, are I, we getting paid so that well, I can well, get I, a salary I, hike as well? Well, I think, <laughs> I, I think, I think uh, I'd like to take it from where my colleagues have talked about. I mean, for example, we have to hold our leaders, and when I talk about leaders, I'm not only really talking about politicians. Mm. I'm talking about all of us, yes. including yourself. Thank you. We, hold, we have to hold a, our leadership to account. And, for example, you know, let's take the judiciary, for example. And I, 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 I do this with a lot of respect to the judiciary and the legal profession. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a situation in which this president is trying his best to deal with the corruption issues. Mm -hmm. The matter goes to court. 40 political journalists go to court to, de, you know, to, to, to protect certain individuals, for example. Uh, some of them, uh, um, you know, politicizing this fight against corruption, for example. Now, I think all of us have to be held to account.